Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day. Today we are going to make a great along video because after a lot of requests, I finally made a pack available where you can buy and download a few of my clips. There are currently 12 clips in the pack. It's only 10 euros, so it's not a lot, but it allows you to grade along with me because I'm going to make more of these videos, at least using these 12 clips. And today we're starting with one of them. So the idea here is that you can download this pack and you can practice all the color grading that you want yourself. Some people have been requesting this since they don't have access to log or 10-bit footage. So there are free drone clips and the rest are from my Canon R6 in C-Log3. I might be adding other types and variants later on, S-Log3 and so on, as I get my hands on those and I will shoot it. If you get the pack now, all future clips will be available in the pack as well. So don't worry about that. And as another different thing, I've also included the power grade. Now this is completely free. It's just a link to my Google Drive. So you can find that in the description along with the other link for the pack as well. And both of these should just make it easy for you to jump straight into this. So if you get the pack, you can find the clip as well. Use the same clip, grade along live as you're watching this video. And if you just wanna grade your own clip, but use my power grade, you can download the power grade. It's made for this video particularly and for this clip, but you can just change the few parameters in the color space transforms and it'll work perfectly fine as well. So we're gonna start with just importing the power grade and choosing the clip. And I'll just show you from there on what we do and how we go about it. So let's jump straight into the computer and get started in DaVinci. This is the clip that we will be grading today. And if you downloaded the footage pack, you will see all the clips in here. You can drag them all in or just choose the one that is this clip. This is the one that we are grading. When you find the clip in here, this one, you might go into say clip attributes and just change this to 30 frames or 24 frames or whatever you want. It's shot in 60 frames, so it will not be in slow motion unless you do that. For grading purposes, it doesn't really matter that much, but if you want to do it correctly, that's the way to go. Now let's jump into our color grading space here. And right now I've just deleted the node tree that we're going to use. So the way that you import this, if you downloaded the node tree as well, is you go to import and you navigate to where you downloaded the file. And you want the one that is called DPX, the one that is a little bit larger than the other one. You want to click import and that should just import this as well. You can either double click on it and that should create the node tree or you can right click and say apply grade. And that will just give you a full on node tree that we want for this video. So instead of spending a lot of time on telling you how this works, the only pre information that is set here is the two color space transforms. So the first one is going from Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log3, which this is shot in, into DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And the last one here is just converting in from the Vinci White Gamut and Intermediate into Rec. 79 and Gamma 2.4. The only other settings I have is if we go into settings down here, color management, I have my timeline color space set to the Vinci White Gamut and Intermediate and the output to Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4. So with all of the settings out of the way, this is the node tree that we are gonna be working with. If you are making this yourself as we go, you can just create the nodes, adding nodes and serials. All these first ones are serials and the next ones are parallel nodes. We'll get to that in a second. So by grading this clip, the first thing I want to do is go with contrast. So we're going to make a simple contrast curve here and I'm going to watch my waveform down here, make sure that nothing is clipping. I think this is pretty good. And then I'm gonna drag up my highlights as well just to create that separation between the dark and the bright areas. So already this looks pretty good, I would say. Let's go into exposure and see if there's anything we want to do in here. I think it looks pretty good already, but I just want to boost the bright areas a little bit more and then maybe take the lift down one notch just to give it a little bit more brightness. So we went from this to this in just two quick adjustments. The tone curve here, making a slight S curve. And for the exposure here, we just added a little bit of gamma and reduced the lift a little bit. I exposed this quite well, I would say myself. So you don't really need to do the adjustments in the exposure. It's mostly just for demonstrating what we're doing here. So with the color correction out of the way, these two steps here, we're keeping it simple today. Let's jump into the primaries. For the primaries, I want to make it teal and orange. If you've followed this channel for a while, you know that that's my go-to. So let's do that and keep it simple for this part as well. How I like to do it is instead of dragging this knob around in here and making it too much, I'm just gonna do it in the lift and the gamut by adjusting the numbers down here. So for the left, we are going to just add 0 0.2 
to the blue and 0.1 to the green and remove one from the red. That will make it very, very teal, but we can counter some of that by removing the same green and the same blue in here. So negative 0.1 and negative 0.2 here, just to kind of get rid of that. Now I want to add a little bit in the gain as well, just to counter a little bit of that. So I think we'll add 1.03 and 1.01 to the red and the green to kind of make this a little bit more yellow in the highlights in the game. And that way we kind of balanced out. It's very subtle. You can see a slight change, but you can see it from going from a little bit more bright and green here to have that teal color. And here you just get a little bit more warmer tones instead of like all being teal. We are going to do a little bit more when we get to the masking in a second. But for this, I think that's pretty good. Let's jump into the curves here. And for the curves, I want to make my greens a little bit more yellow and my yellows out here a little bit more orange. So by that, I'm going to grab a node or a point around here and a point around here just to make sure that we have that set. We're going to drag this up a little bit and then I'm going to make a point over here and drag that down. That'll just solo out our oranges here and make them a little bit more orange. And we're just going to be careful that we're not doing it too much. So something like this makes it a little bit more red, but I think that's okay for now. Now for the greens, I'm just going to take a sample of the greens here to see where they lie. They actually go into the teals and that makes sense because in the primaries we added quite a lot of teal. So let's split this out by adding some orange here and remove this node again. So moving this up, you can see we get a little bit more warmer tones in the greens here, which is exactly what I wanted. And then we are going to over here drag down because I want to separate the colors by making the teals more teal and make the greens more orange. I'm gonna drag this point out here and just make sure that by dragging this up, we are putting all the colors here inside of the teal area. So now we have a good color separation. We have teal and orange pretty much all over. I think that looks pretty good. If you're wondering why my histogram is moving in the background, it's because I have histogram set to output. So instead of seeing what comes into the node, I'm seeing what comes out of the node. And I like to work this way because I can see exactly what I'm changing and what I'm doing inside of this workflow. Now, I want to make sure that we have a little bit more desaturated greens here. So I'm going to make a point over here and a point over here because I want the teals to be a little bit desaturated as well. So something like this. I think it's pretty good. Just desaturating all these a little bit and then I'm going to make the warmer tones a little bit more saturated. So by this we're just creating a little bit more balance again and making a little bit less teal I guess but still quite a fine tone. Let's just split it out completely by just making this point in the middle just to balance it out a lot more. So the curves here and then for the luminance I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to brighten up the like the orange parts and darken down the darken down darken the teal parts a little bit. It's very subtle, but now we went to a little bit more of this sunset vibe, which it actually was sunset, but the sun was just coming from a different direction. Okay, so with these two, the primaries and the curves, we went from this to this. It's pretty subtle, but I like how we just changed the look a little bit. And this would be perfectly fine to just go with. But let's take it a step further and go into masking and just create and balance the light out a little bit more. Now we have parallel notes. First up, you create a serial note and then you can right click and add note and then add parallel notes. I've added two parallel notes below here. So we have the inside note and then the highlights and the shadows. For the inside note, to have the outside note as well, we are adding another note to that and adding an outside note. The outside node basically just selects everything that is not selected in the inside node. You'll see that in a second. And for the halation one here, I've just right clicked, made a new serial node and combined the two alpha keys here. So the blue output into the blue input here. More on that in a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to put more focus and emphasis on this part of the image because I think that's the interesting part even though it's in the background. So by making a circular mask here, I'm dragging that out a little bit, feathering it out. Oop. Something like this, maybe even feathering out a little bit more. Something like this could be good. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast in here. So I'm just going to drag down my shadows a bit and pull up my highlights a little bit as well. And that just creates a bit more contrast in this area, putting in a little bit more focus here. And you can see if I click Shift H, this is what we have selected. But now if I click on the outside node instead, now we have everything but this selected. So going to the outside node, I want to go into my primaries wheels again here, and I want to turn down my gamma 
just to kind of give it a little bit of a vignette feeling and also just lower this. I'm still looking at my waveform down here, making sure that I'm not clipping anything because you can see we're dragging it down quite a bit and we're still not clipping anything, so that's pretty good. Now, what I wanna do now is I want to create a little bit more color separation as well. So going for the teal and orange look that we're already working on, I want to add a little bit in my outside node here to the left, I want to add a little bit more teal. Something like this looks pretty good, I think. And then in my inside node, I want to add a little bit more orange. So I'm gonna add 1.2 or 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, just to add, I guess, a little bit more yellow. And that just really separates these. And because we already selected this part in here and the surrounding parts, which is the bright areas, you can see we get this nice and warm tone out here, which I think looks pretty good. So with that done, let's just see what the inside and outside node did. You see we create a lot more focus. This up here becomes a little bit dark as well, but that's why we're going to control the highlights. We could fix that in the inside and outside nodes as well. But for now, I think this is pretty good. I still kind of like the vignette that we're getting here and the focus that we're getting on the middle part here. So for the highlights here, I'm going to create a node over here. Now the sun was coming from the other direction, but I actually kind of want to See if we can emulate the sun coming just a little bit from over here. So I'm gonna drag this out and then I'm gonna make this, I think I'm gonna make the softening 100. So, so we can see exactly what we're doing here. Something like this. And if we zoom out, you'll see we have a lot more selected than we actually need. Keeping the shift H down here so we can see what we've selected. I'm going to go into my qualifier and then the luminance, I'm just going to drag up the dark parts here. I'm gonna soften it out by 10, the low soft here and just drag it in. This means that we are not selecting most of the dark parts here, but we're still selecting the highlights. And what I wanna do is I want to add a little bit of brightness here, just a little bit, not too much. Even drag down the white point a little bit, just brighten it up. And then I wanna add a little bit more warmth again. So yes, I know we're adding warmth all the time, but now we're doing it selectively here in the middle. I might actually drag this down just a tiny bit again. Something like this, I think is pretty good. Because by adding red and green in here, we're actually improving the luminance as well a little bit. So I think this is pretty good. And now I want to add the halation. Now you can see because we've added the alpha key here to the halation, this is still what is selected. And it's actually doing the opposite of what I want right now. And not selecting the parts that I want, but selecting the opposite, a tiny bit weird. There we go. I think I accidentally made it an outside node. So you can see by right clicking and adding a serial node and then combining these two, now we have the same selection on the halation here. So that will also be wrong and thing you have to correct in the power grade. We are going to search for halation and then drag halation down here. And it's always a little bit too strong in the beginning. You can see now it just added a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is first pull out the strength and then pull out the spread. Now I'm looking at what it does here. So if we zoom in or we make it full screen here, we can see now that's a lot to the effect. So what I wanna do is I wanna drag the spread down until I think that looks pretty good. Somewhere around here. And then I'm going to turn down the strength as well to somewhere where it looks not too much. Something like this, where it just gives a little bit of a bloom effect. You can see now it's off and now it's on. Just gives a little bit of a bloom effect. It's not much, but it just adds a little bit of extra flair, and I like how that just turns out. It's unnoticeable almost if you don't know what you're looking for, but in the end, it makes a little bit of a difference. Now for the shadows, our last part here, I'm gonna make a rectangular mask. And just drag that down here in the bottom. We're gonna drag that up quite a bit, something like this. Zoom in again so we can see what we're doing. And for this, I'm going to use my qualifier again, but I'm going to go opposite of what we did before. I'm just gonna kind of erase the highlights from our selection, make it a softening of 10 again, something like this. And then I'm just going to go into my curves and just drag down a little bit, just to remove some emphasis of the foreground here or the bottom, and just turn out the shadows a little bit here, all the blacks, something like this. And that's pretty much what we're doing for this tutorial. So let's just look at what we did before we end the video. This is all the masking that we did. Inside node, outside node to create emphasis. Highlights to create some kind of illusion that the sun is coming from over here and adding some halation for the bloom. And then for the shadows here, we are just making the bottom a little bit more dark. So we turn it off. This is what we came from. And this is what we ended up with. Now, if we turn this off again and we look at what we did for our curves and our primaries, this is with it off 
and this is with it on. So we could just create a little bit more color separation, made everything a little bit more orange and teal, just to separate the colors and make it even more appealing, at least in my opinion. So turning this off again. And then we started out just having the contrast and exposure here. So if we turn that off, this is the more flat Rec. 709 footage or image that we came from. And this is what we got when we added our contrast and exposure. And if we go all the way back down, we can see this is what I did before you even started the video. This was the flat log footage that we worked with in the beginning. And this is what we got. So if we go all the way back to this is the flat log footage, and this is what we ended up with. I am pretty satisfied with this edit and I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with how everything turned out and we didn't clip anything anywhere. That's also because we're working in the Vinci White Gamut. It gives us a bit more flexibility to work with. So if you picked up the pack to grade along, I'm sorry that it was a little bit fast. I hope you still was able to do it. And if not, then you can go back and maybe even play it at 0.75 speed. That makes it a little bit easier or pause as many times as you need to, to see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to make these videos a little less long so that it's a little bit more digestible. I hope you enjoyed both the power grade and maybe the pack. And in the future, I'll be making a lot more videos with the different clips that we have in this pack. So check it out and see if it's something for you. And otherwise, I'm just happy that you watched the video. Thank you so much. And until the next time, take care.